Welcome back to AJ Kitchen Paper. Today we are looking at teriyaki saba or teriyaki mackerel. No, teriyaki is not just for chicken. Now that Oates has sniffed out the freshest saba that he could find in the supermarket, let's dive in. Let's just quickly start off with some ginger. So chop up and peel off a nub of ginger. And we're gonna slice up this ginger into tiny little thin strips. And now let's just place that aside because we're going to get stuck into cutting up our saba. So first we've got to shine up our knife a little bit because if you don't have a sharp knife, you're not getting very far. You can pick up one of these weird looking bricks from any reputable 100 yen store. Now that he's nice and sharp on both sides, grab your saba, show him off to your friends. So underneath our fishy friend's fin, you're going to cut off his head and then you're going to take out all of his guts and start to scrape off his scales. You're also going to make an incision in his belly and wash out any blood and guts. Now you're going to cut along his spine, going from the tail to where his head was, and you're going to cut all the way up until you've got a nice fillet. Now you'll notice that our fishy friend also still has his rib cage intact in there. So after flipping him over and cutting off the rest of his spine and tail to get you another fillet, you're going to do your very best to get as many bones from his rib cage as possible, which will in fact involve cutting out and pulling out with your fingers all of his tiny bones. Run your fingers along his spine to make sure that you've got all of those bones out as well and then get stuck in with a pair of tweezers or just your fingers to pull out any last remaining small bones. Now we're just going to chop this boy in half and that's it, you've broken down an entire mackerel. Apart from trying to find all the sneaky bones, it's pretty easy. Now pop them on a plate because we're going to start cooking. So over to the flame we go, heating up a large fry pan on high with a little bit of oil Lovely, swish it around and then carefully place your fish in skin side down. And we're just going to let them sit for a little bit, soaking up any excess oil that comes out of them. This makes sure that our skin is nice and crispy. And then flippity flip over to reveal some golden brown skin. And then we're just going to cook these boys off in a nice sake bath. So just chuck in about 200 ml of cooking sake, pour that all over and then we're just going to pop the lid on. Pull the lid off and then we're going to add in 100 ml of soy sauce, 100 ml of mirin and our little slivers of ginger as well. And we're just going to let that marinate and sit all together, mm, steamy bathtub, until they're nice and basted. Excellent. Now that all that flavour has permeated our fish, we're going to take out the fish and then we're going to reduce down this sauce. So bring this up to a high heat once everybody's out of the pool. And now to make this extra syrupy, we're going to add five tablespoons of sugar. Keep stirring to dissolve all that sugar and make sure it doesn't burn until you get this golden brown syrupy teriyaki sauce. Now to make sure that we can soak up as much of this sauce as possible, we're also going to peel a daikon and then grate it down to a tiny nub. Now you can just pile this on top of your fish, no problems. However, we're lucky enough today to have these little molds. This is an adorable mold that makes your daikon piles look like tiny cats trying to eat your fish. So squeeze out any excess water and then with some shiso as garnish, also known as perilla leaves, place your tiny daikon kitties on top and then with a few drops of soy sauce, give those kitties some spots. Show off your adorable plate to the internet. Tonight's drink of choice is clear asahi beer. This is a springtime limited edition beer targeted at specifically overworked Japanese middle-aged men. They will never see the blossoms. All right, time for a taste test, I reckon. I can tell you right now that this sauce that you would have made in your pan is a thousand times better than anything that you would get from the supermarket in one of those weird bottles. This golden brown sticky sauce drizzled all over your wonderful fish makes for a wonderfully light yet hearty dish. Cooking this all in sake also makes sure that all of that fishy smell is gone. So even if you aren't a massive fan of fish, definitely try this out. Alright guys, till next time.